I finally got some time on my hands, so let's talk about that Kenobi trailer, because, whoo! When the trailer starts, Obi-Wan is traveling across the sand on the back of an EOP. Of course, EOP is the same type of creature that he dropped off Luke to the Lars in the first place, but that being said, I recently reread the John Jackson Miller book, Kenobi. Love that book, highly recommend it. It is Legends, but it's it's very good, and I believe it's getting re-released very soon. Anyways, he also has an ELP in that, it's same as Rue, it is adorable, and uh, it's pregnant, so he got a two-for-one deal on that one. Anyhow, hopefully uh, they make some reference to that, because I know that in from a certain point of view, uh, A New Hope, they actually came in as a Yark, another character in the book. But one of my biggest fears was that this was going to be a retelling of that story, which I don't want, all right? I already have the book. I, I don't need that story told again, but this makes it very clear that he's going to be going off-world, and I love that. In the trailer, we also get some words coming from Obi-Wan. He said, the fight is done. We lost. Stay hidden. It's interesting, because it sounds, the way he said it, it sounds like it's in, in a cave. We don't know if all of these are being spoken at the same time, or if stay hidden happens somewhere else. Him saying stay hidden also just could have been, you know, a message to himself. And the other question is, who is he talking to? He might be talking to Qui-Gon, potentially. Uh, we know that his learning how to commune with Qui-Gon took him 10 years, meaning this is around the time that he would be responding, which is really interesting, because this is also something that you can take from the John Jackson Miller book. He talks to Qui-Gon constantly, but Qui-Gon never responds. And so he might be doing this just to talk out loud, to keep himself sane, uh, to keep himself company. He might actually be trying to reach out to Qui-Gon. And I hope that he spends most of the series reaching out to Qui-Gon and getting nothing. And after the events that happen in the show, he will finally get a response. And I hope Liam Neeson is there to reprise his role because that would be amazing. We get a glimpse of Obi-Wan looking over the Lars homestead and we see a young Luke sitting on the house pretending that he's in, in a speeder. Um, he might be pretending that he's pod racing like his father. I imagine he probably feels like he's flying through a beggar's cannon on a on his T-16 Skyhopper, but you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see until we get there. Uh, we see him wearing goggles, which is pretty reminiscent of Anakin. Are they the same goggles? Did Shmi bring him with him? No, no. His goggles and the Phantom Menace were attached to the helmet, so obviously they're not gonna be the same. But it is a cool nod, and he looks a lot like Jake Lloyd. Then boom. And then that's when the music changed and this trailer really takes off. You know, we started with the Force theme and it went into the Duel of the Fates and, and we're going for it. One thing I think is super cool is how this project is going to be tying together so many other things. So we're getting uh, the Inquisitorious, which we first visited in Jedi Fallen Order. The Inquisitors that are coming in are reprising their roles from Star Wars Rebels. Um, we have uh, seen a lot more information about them and about you know certain you know, specific ones and the Vader 2017 run. And, you know, in that run, we also got to see Vader build his castle on Mustafar, which this is one of the moons in the Mustafar system. And the iconography of the dual spires, which is meant to emulate a tuning fork, we get to see that echo throughout the design of the Inquisitorius and their ships. Here, we're also gonna get some additional nods to the Ahsoka book, because if you wanted to know exactly how the Inquisitors hunt their prey, ooh, that's what happens through all of the Ahsoka book, which the events of that book have already taken place by this time period. And I think that might be why these Inquisitors are hunting with multiple Inquisitors. And that also could um, explain why we have two new Inquisitors that we've never seen before. Now we see the Grand Inquisitor here. He looks a little bit different. And I think people are definitely gonna have a problem with that, but it makes sense. His head shape in Rebels is kind of crazy right it's it's not just that it's taller and more angular but it's like both the top is taller and the bottom is longer in like the spacing of his eyes i don't see a way they can do that with practical effects plus you know coming from someone that used to do a lot of parkour and stuff like that like it would you'd have to wear a head or you'd have to cg everything and i don't know i think you could lose things in the face performance of the actor and if they try to like make some sort of like cast head, I think it could really affect the ability to do stunts or to make it look good. 
that's another thing to consider. Oftentimes they do screen tests and just see how things will look and they'll just choose the best option. So I don't know, I think it looks kind of funky, right? Um, I think they could have at least given him the yellow eyes, but um, who knows? Maybe that'll happen as he's using the force and like diving more into the dark side, but we'll have to see. By the way, the Grand Inquisitor, um, like a lot of the Inquisitors, is a former Jedi. He was a temple guard, a temple guardian, and um, after Order 66, ended up turning, and they're using him to hunt down more Jedi. At this point in the trailer, he says, the key to hunting Jedi is patience. Jedi cannot help what they are. Their compassion leaves a trail. The Jedi code is like an itch. He cannot help. Uh, but itch it. Where is he? Of course, he keeps saying he, making us believe that he is talking about Kenobi, but I have a different take. I actually think that there's another Force sensitive that is on planet. Who is it? I don't know. Maybe it's Asherod Het. People would be pissed if it was, but, <laughs> but um, you know, you, you, you never know. I, I honestly believe, though, that there will be, in order to establish the Inquisitors as a credible threat, we have to see them take down a Force user. Now, at some point, Obi-Wan will probably lose 2-1, but I think we need to see them absolutely, like, manhandle someone um, at some point before we get there. Also, we do have three of them that are coming in. Uh, we have Reva, who seems like is going to be our main one, played by Moses Ingram. Well, we also see um, the fifth brother, uh, who is played by Sung Kang. In the Ahsoka novel, it does get out that there is a Force user potentially um, on, on the planet that she's hiding on. So um, the sixth brother is dispatched there to find a location and essentially just sits above and hides and monitors communication. I mean, tracking Jedi is like his, his thing. And he almost uncovers a Force sensitive little girl named um, Hadala Farty uh, that is on the planet. And in, in hunting Ahsoka, they pull no punches. It's it's really rough. <laughs> when they fi do finally find her um, on the moon of, um, of Raeda, they take captive her friends and they torture them. And they know exactly what buttons to push in order to force a Jedi out of hiding. I think we're going to see a lot of that here because they really will show no mercy. So in that story, at one point, Ahsoka hides once the Inquisitor gets there because she feels like her friends are going to be in danger. And then eventually she realizes that they're going to be in danger unless she stands up to them. Of course, that book ends with her absolutely manhandling that one, uh, detonating his lightsaber in his face and then taking the crystals, purifying them. And that's why she has two white lightsaber crystals. In the underwater fortress of the Inquisitorius, we do see another so far unnamed Inquisitor with uh, some tendrils coming down the back. I, I'm thinking Philothian related maybe. This could be a wholly new, a wholly new species. Um, d definitely doesn't look familiar to me, but I look forward to finding out more information. Who knows, maybe we may get some tie-in comics and things uh, out of it as well. Also notice that one of these chairs has two spires on it, which really look like they're mimicking Vader. Vader leads the Inquisitories, and he, I mean, he does not like them. Like, he's straight up, you know, will chop off your foot or your eye or whatever <laughs> and, and not care. But if Vader had a seat here, it'd probably be that one. Um, of course, as the representative of it, the Grand Inquisitor might also take that big chair as well. We get to see someone's feet dangling, and I, uh, I'm given to assume that that person is not doing too well. And Reva definitely seems to be like the one responsible. We also have uh, Joel Edgerton um, coming back here as Uncle Owen, and yeah, they get in each other's faces. But I really, I mean, this makes me really interested in it because you know, this would so much further solidify, like, him not wanting Obi-Wan around. We know in the comics, Obi-Wan does pop up from time to time. One time he gives um, Luke parts to fix a speeder, um, and they, just just every now and then he pops up, and Uncle Owen really, really does not want him there. Of course, they do kind of, like, find a little bit of uh, footing when Black Chrysanthemum tries to kill him. And uh, Obi-Wan defends and actually gives uh, Chris Anton his, his famous scar, but 
I, I digress. Then we get some scenes of Dayo, a new planet that's supposed to mimic uh, like Hong Kong, and it's supposed to have that that lived in you know graffiti um, type feeling with these neon signs for the market. And I am always excited to get new places and. This is an excellent place to watch one of these hunts go down. Because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of places to blend in. And we're going to see how well Obi-Wan is, uh, is up to the task. We get a quick scene of a trooper who's talking to a droid. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that this droid is Camille Nanjiani. They typically have comedians like that playing droids. I think it's a, it's a shame to not have him physically acting because I, I, I love him. And he turned into an absolute unit. So, uh, but like, actually, I, I take it back. That's why he needs to be a droid. Because if you saw him walking around and he was just like ripped, you're like, like that guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, he can't just be a random bystander who's just, you know, built like a truck. One thing that is interesting is we see how dirty and scuffed up this trooper is. And we don't know why, right? These stormtroopers are relatively new. And all the ones that we see are very shiny in their armor. Plus, this one looks a little bit different. Could this potentially be a, a, a clone trooper? We don't know. Maybe Cody is part of the of, part of the search team because who is else is going to know Obi Wan better? Then of course we got to get a spinning lightsaber for uh, intimidation mode. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm excited to see how it works. Um, I might get weirded out if they use them to fly around like helicopters, but we'll see. We see Reva meet with someone in a long alley and they have a gun drawn. Is this Kenobi that we're going to see here? I don't think so. I doubt it, mostly because it might be stupid or small. They could easily work around it, but it's a different gun. That being said, the scene that where they were shooting at him, it just, uh, I, I, I really enjoy it because of the camera pan. I just thought that was a really interesting shot with how he's getting flanked. And I don't know, I just don't typically see those shots. It's usually just like a one-to-one -one cover shot, like you're playing Mass Effect or something. But this, <laughs> this looks more interesting of a fight. Then of course we see some type of explosion with some green space birds flying out. No, these are not Mirai, that's not Convor. Um, I, they, they don't even look remotely the same. I wouldn't worry about it. Then, of course, we end with that final touch of Anakin's dark deeds. And we hear Vader breathing. And whoo, the first time <laughs> the first time I watched it, I didn't even hear the breathing because I was breathing hard. Watch, it's like, oh, I'm ready. And yeah, I didn't even hear Vader breathing at all the first time. I don't even know how, man. I must have been going hard. All in all, I'm super excited. I hope that uh, the whole community really does rally around this one i think we're really going to dive into the psyche of obi-wan because he's really has a lot of things going on and i think they're going to address a lot of the same things that we saw a bit in the john jackson miller novel where he's he's really paying penance he feels singly responsible he was the one that trained anakin he and he failed um last time he was on this planet he was there with Shmi and Anakin and Padme and Qui-Gon and all of those people are dead. It's just him. And he has to find his, his new place, his new role. Everything that he's ever known as being a Jedi, everything he's ever done is protecting people and putting them first. And now he has a mission that is probably going to feel a bit selfish. He's probably going to know that he could help people and has to choose not to and it's gonna kill him a little bit on, on the inside and he has to come to terms with his new life his new living situation his new you know relationship with the force and with the, the the jedi they're in conservation mode he can't be a jedi in order for the jedi to survive and i need to see how that plays with him of course, we are getting Vader to come back and there will be that fight. Um, I think he's going to appeal to Vader. He's going to try to get him to come back to see the light. And I think that's going to be the reprise of the line in Return of the Jedi where he says, Obi-Wan once thought as you did. Because remember, that wasn't a thing last time they fought. After Anakin took down the younglings, Obi-Wan was just straight up, yeah, we... Uh, we, we're, we're taking them down. <laughs> so, yeah, can't wait. This is this is going to be beautiful. Um, they're getting Hayden Christensen back, which I think means a lot to me personally and the fan base as a whole. If you think about it, that wasn't Hayden Christensen in the suit at the end of Rogue One. 
right? They don't need Hayden Christensen for Vader. They could use him for it, absolutely, but they don't need him for it. The fact that they have him, I think we're going to get lots of flashbacks. I think we're going to get some... Uh, hopefully we'll get him outside of the mask. We're going to hopefully see you know, Anakin adjusting to this life. And I, I can't wait. I, I need... I mean, at the end of the day, these Inquisitors are going out in order to find Rogue Jedi. But if they come in contact with one that they can't take down themselves... I'm sure they're going to reach out to the big man, and we're going to get that rematch that Kathleen Kennedy said would be the rematch of a century. Anyways, those are my thoughts and feelings on the Kenobi trailer. Um, let me know what you think if you're excited. Thank you to everyone that supports me and supports this channel. I truly appreciate you. Um, if anyone else does want to support or do a helping hand, you can just give this video a like or subscribe, comment, share, and all those things because all of it really helps. Thank you so much. We will be diving into this weekly, and I got lots and lots of content planned around the Inquisitors and uh, predictions and all of that good stuff. So yeah, stick around, and may the Force be with you, always.